Bree, Bree, Bree! Probably shouldn't have shown the last image. Might give her ideas. Story, good people of the internet. This is Heritage Media, and today's video is about Brie Larson, and not only how she's tried to single-handedly scuttle the MCU's winning streak, but she's managed to take down Rotten Tomatoes along with her. It's like when I was looking at Rotten Tomatoes, this was the site that beside me. It had a 28% score, which I couldn't believe, to be honest with you, because it was 96, I think, when this all started off. And the important thing to look here, though, is this figure. 44,735. Last time I was on the site, that's how many people had contributed to that score. Now, it's gone. And as you can see from the score down here, we've only got this little thing that's saying 16,341 users want to see this film. So they've actually deplatformed all those people. Rotten Tomatoes has thrown around and said, nope, we're not going to stick with this. I couldn't believe it myself when I got up in the morning and seen that. There's loads of other videos for the people out there and you've seen it saying it. And it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's clearly somebody has nobbled somebody. Somebody's got onto them. I don't know whether it was Disney, whether it was Kevin Feige, whether it was somebody from the PR department from Disney. I don't know what's going on at all. All we know is today, you're not able to go into Rotten Tomatoes, like you could always do, and make a comment about whether you're going to see the film or not. Now, Rotten Tomatoes have given a statement in a statement that says, as of February 25th, we will no longer show the want to see percentage score for a movie during its pre-release period. Why, you might ask. We found that the want to see percentage score is often confused with the audience score. Nope, I don't think that's ever actually happened before. The only people who've been saying it's been confused with the audience score has been the other lads in the media who've been desperately trying to shill for Captain Marvel. Because as we've seen in the last couple of days, it has plummeted down to the 28%. And in fact, if you listen to other YouTubers like SC Reviews, it went down as far as 26 before they decided to call it quits and just get rid of the system altogether. Interesting here though, it's then trying to turn around and saying that any review that is less than 3.5, it's not going to be shown. That seems to me to say that it's almost going to be physically impossible for anyone to actually say, this is a bad film. So the next Sharknado film that comes out is going to get at least a 3.5 from anyone from the audience. But the critics seem to be able to have carte blanche to do whatever they want. In other words, you're going to get an elite battle angel from them, but the audience is still stuck to what they're doing. It's really hilarious to say that they actually have this page up for a good while now and it has no comments. I can only presume that's because nobody is actually allowed to comment on it. They do have these little response icons though. So let's have a look. I'll press angry. An error has occurred while saving your reaction. Ah, uh, there's definitely something going on here. That's definitely strange. Someone has definitely nobbled Rotten Tomatoes. Because it's interesting to note at this stage that they never did this for films like Ghostbusters 2016. They never did it for films like Venom, which had a review bombing from people who were trying to push forward A Star Is Born. All in all, it seems to be about trying to do desperate damage control for Captain Marvel. A film which had a massive 180 million expected opening weekend get reduced all the way to best case scenario, 120 million, worst case scenario, 80 million. Now, I'll give the critics for trying to say that this film was going to make a massive opening weekend. And a lot of that, in fairness, was due to the fact that it was thinly tied to Infinity War. But the truth is, most normal people don't know who Captain Marvel is. The comic books community are evenly split whether they like her or not. And indeed, her own comics have been cancelled and relaunched eight times in the last five years. This is a character that isn't beloved. She is not Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman is much beloved and could still only get somewhere around 103 million opening weekend for its film. So look that from that angle. Captain Marvel, I reckon, is going to pull in about, as I said, 60 to 85 million. But you put it pretty much in line with Doctor Strange which is comparably the last known, unknown Marvel character to get his own origin film. And that's key to me because that Captain Marvel isn't actually all that connected to Infinity War. From fact, what we can see, it seems to be a standalone origin series. So technically speaking, you could probably miss this film completely and it's not going to impact your enjoyment of Avengers Endgame. And that is the, the major hook it has to it. Now, I know a lot of people have tried to say, well, look at Black Panther. Black Panther wasn't well known either. True, but he did get a really good introduction in Captain America Civil War. A fairly substantial part in it. A good character arc in which he went from a dutiful son to a grieving son to Black Panther on the vengeance to Black Panther, Black Panther, who decided to forsake that vengeance and decide to go with justice when he arrested Zemo instead of killing him. That set people up. They were looking forward to it. 
But even Black Panther wasn't really all that important for Avengers Infinity War. You could have missed it and perfectly enjoyed Avengers Infinity War. And I think that's what's going to happen with Captain Marvel. I think it's perfectly possible for you to miss this film and still enjoy the last Avengers film. These are major drawbacks for Captain Marvel. So I reckon at this stage, Captain Marvel is going to pull in Doctor Strange numbers. It's going to probably end somewhere around 655 million, something like that, in the total world come. And a lot of it, unfortunately, is down to Brie Larson. Brie Larson simply put her foot in it at every occasion. This film had a 96% excited to see score, wanted to see score on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, as we've seen, it's got so low they have to disable it. And the reason that is solely down to Brie Larson. A woman who's had to say that she doesn't hate white people three times in the same interview. You're doing that, love. You're in trouble. So that's my opinions on this. I think Captain Marvel is not going to be a flop, but it's not going to make the money they thought it was going to make. $655 million is a is a good worldwide ton. It'll definitely mean that she'll get a sequel. But it's not what they were expecting. And I don't think it's going to pull in Black Panther's million. We're certainly not not in a $1.35 billion event here. So, there you go. That's my take on it. Absolutely a gog to see what else can happen with this film because I've never seen anything crash and burn as bad as Brie Larson's PR campaign. I can only imagine what's going to happen next. So I hope you like this video. Leave some comments to let me think. And please subscribe to this channel. Take care, guys.